This is how to get better at origami and it's covering pre uh, I was going to say pre-creasing uh, What was it? Oh, I, forgot. I forgot what I was covering Oh my god Patience! That is it We are covering patience, not pre-creasing So I've got five things here We have two bits of paper and three models So we're going to go over a few minutes on each one and basically talk about why patience is important for each of these but a quick general review patience is extremely important if you do not have patience then I can assure you origami is not for you because you will be required to spend countless hours or countless days making a model and it's one it's funny because every time I tell people I do origami um, I, I say I sit down for ages I sit down for hours making models. Models take me weeks to make, months to make, and then they're in awe, they're in shock that, and then they're like, I can never do that, I can never sit down and have patience. It is one of the most vital things in origami that you, in a way, you really need to do if you want to take origami seriously. So patience is extremely important when it comes to folding, and it's something you really need to have. And if you don't have it, then you could work your way up to get in more patients, to get in better at patients and just go from there. So the first thing we're going to cover is tessellations. This is this one right here. This is what it looks like. That, that would be a pretty good thumbnail. So patience when it comes to tessellations is probably the easiest out of everything here simply because when you make a tessellation you make a grid and then you add the other creases and then when it comes to, I should really dust this fella, he's not been dusted in a while. So when it comes to collapsing a tessellation, you basically, in a way, need to have everything come together at once, in a way. And it's quite tricky because once you have one part collapsed, the other part is quite open, so you have to then work that part. So it, it is a matter of working each part together until it all actually look I'll let you in one second until it all basically comes together and it can be quite time consuming it's something you don't rush <laughs> right, I'm going to let it. okay so look it is out I can continue pardon me so it's something you don't rush because if you rush it then you won't effectively collapse the model as best as possible and it's a matter of putting one part in place using that part that is in place to help put in the part next to it and so on and so forth through the entire tessellation now this is a really fun one to make so if you can get a chance to do this I can't actually remember what it's called but if I can remember by the time I edit and upload this video it will be on the screen or in the description somewhere so this is number one number two is collapsing which we have a base here this is Kota's cicada or the flying cicada now when it comes to collapsing it's probably it's one of the most for me it's one of the most fun parts of origami to do because this is where you put your patience and most important skill to the actual test to see if you can collapse a model and basically get ready to shape it so when it comes to patience for collapsing collapsing does take collapsing does take quite a while and depending on what model you make what paper you use, what size you use how much time you have Patience is very vital because the the more precise you are when you collapse, basically the more time you take, the better it is in general. So when you come to collapse with something that's really complex, you should take as much time as you need to get it collapsed. Because the more time you take to collapse it, the better it is, the more precise it is, the, the better it will look in the end. 
um, the easier it will be to shape and then basically the end result will be better and cleaner so it's very important that you take your time even if you're feeling confident or overconfident it's always better to take your time when you actually come to collapsing a model and again all models are different even complex ones have difficulties of collapsing some can be much easier than others some have better sequences etc so it's a matter of patience is really vital when it comes to collapsing so figuring it out is something you need to take your time with and most importantly do it correctly so you can get the best result in the end so that is collapsing we have done tessellations collapsing and shaping now shaping again I picked the hardest model just to give it as a clear example shaping when it comes to what was I covering again I forgot <laughs> oh my god I have actually forgot what I was covering give me a second guys give me a second it will come to me it will come to me I keep thinking precision patience we have got it patience again I forgot for the second time so when it comes to patience for shaping it is super important when you shape it is not a race it is not a rush same with collapsing it is not a rush you take as long as you need to shape or collapse because from my perspective and my opinion and my point of view taking your time taking much longer to collapse and shape gives a much better result because there's folders out there who can collapse models like that but when you compare it to a model that you know someone took their time with there's a big difference in between and my personal opinion is models that are folded way too fast don't look good honestly that's my honest opinion I much prefer when people take their time because if you rush a model you rush the shaping you rush the details even if you know how to do it you, it gets rushed so for instance like the scales there's over 1500 scales I'm going to zoom in these things right here if you don't know what I'm talking about there's over 1500 scales now there's people that could shape all these in a day easily but I took about two and a half months to make so basically I did four rows a day or up to four a day depending on how I felt so basically what is a row that's a row that's a row that's a row and that's a row I did four of those a day and then the next day I would do another four because I took f uh, because I took well basically because I done four a day I could spend as long as I want trying to get these as perfect as possible so I could do that through all of the scales and that's why I took that length of amount of time to actually shape them all and hopefully achieve the best result I could which in my opinion I've gotten so I'm super happy with taking all that time to shape these scales and especially the model in general so when it comes to shaping and patience it is vital because the more time you take the more options you can see when you shape oh this would be good if, if this was curved more or, or this or that or the wings are spread out more thin or etc because if you rush a model then you rush the shaping and then if you glue it when you rush it you could potentially ruin it even if you fin even if you're finished shaping it and then you see it as oh I could have done this better I could have done that I don't know why I, I rushed this or I rushed that because it could have been much better when you take your time you see all these options and possibilities opening up and then it gives you the chance to see which results are the best which outcome would give you the best result and you basically go from there so if you want my honest opinion take your time when you shape it is not a race it is not a competition it is not who can do it the fastest who can be the first so take your time it's super important now let's 
Well, right, okay, we've covered these three. I can get these off the screen. Goodbye, Mr. Ryujin. Now, uh, let me get rid of this red one first. Okay, so here we have this has box pleating. Now, when it comes to patience on box pleating, um, it can be quite repetitive. Uh, yeah, it can be very repetitive because you need to make a grid, and a grid is between a two by two and hundred and four by four, basically. So you need to make whatever grid that you need for that model. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember what this grid is. Maybe let me just. I think it's a 44 by 44 but the thing with patience and box pleating is you need to first of all make the grid and then pre-crease all the creases on the crease pattern because when you make the grid you basically make 80% of the creases already so it's just a matter of making those other creases in the shui for example like diagonals so you need to make those and then of course all the other awkward angled creases if they have any if I can show it on this like that so it's very important that you take your time make the grid as best as possible make the pre-creases as cleanly as possible try not to make any extra creases and again it's not a race the more precise you are the better this will be and the better that you pre-crease a box pleat model the better the collapse the more time you take to collapse the better the end result the better the end result the better the shaping so it is not a race let me just give you a quick example in fact I'll need to write this down okay so I couldn't find my actual pen so I've got this one instead so I'm going to give you a, basically a breakdown on the paper for the patience that it took to actually get to this point on this sheet. So to make the paper, let me just zoom in. Let me zoom out. Let me zoom out. Let's carve this down a wee bit and then zoom in. So here. So to make the paper, it took I would say four days. Four. Four days to make the paper. That's step one. Step two, to make the grid. For me, I hate making grids. It's the worst thing in origami ever. I absolutely hate making grids. So I do take my time with them. So I'm going to say three days. And third is, we've already got the grid made, so we need to pre-crease it. So for pre-creasing, again, this is a pretty complex crease pattern. So I would say... For a Kota model, which this is, let me give a rough idea, a week. So I'm going to say seven days to pre-crease, and that is pre-creasing all the creases and then changing them all to mountain fold and valley fold on both sides, so seven days. So in total, that gives us 14 days. So that means that to make this paper and get to this point in time before I even collapse would no, it has taken me 14, 14 days approximately. So there's a lot of patience already before we have even started to collapse or even shape. So let me give another breakdown as well. Just a rough idea of how long it would take to actually collapse in shape. So let's go for collapsing this model I could say I would probably do it in maybe 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 six days. Because again I like to take my time, I like to make sure everything is on point. Six days. And then five is the shaping. So I would say for shaping hmm as it's a scorpion so again well, I'm going to base it on the last core insect I did 
a day for two legs, the back two legs, a day for the next two legs, a day for the next two legs, has six legs, yep, so then a day for the front spikes, so that's seven in total, and then I'm going to say another day for the rest of them, so that's eight days in total. So, so this is probably, yeah, I'll say eight, eight days for example, eight days. So again, if we add that up, let me quickly zoom in, then we'll do the maths. Total. 14, 20, 28, and we get 28 days. So we have 28 days to make the paper to get to the final finished result. That's how long it would roughly take me because again I like to take my time and make sure everything is precise. The battery is really low so I may not be able to record the last part. I'll record what I can. And the final one is pre-creasing on uh, non-box plate models. Now the important thing about pre-creasing on non-box plate models is you need to be as precise as possible because the more precise you are the better the base and the easier it is to collapse in general and of course the better the model will look in the end. So here we have the Ancient Dragon 2.0 or Ancient Dragon Another by Satoshi Kimiya. If you can notice the mistake I have made in pre-creasing then great job but I'm not going to say because I made a, a stupid error in pre-creasing but anyway it's all good we are ready to collapse but the reason it's important to pre-crease is if you get the references perfect great job if your references are off slightly even the most slightest part and you don't know it it will affect you later on so let me give you an example this we have all been in this position before let me just um, let me just draw an example. We have all been in this position before, and we wonder why it happens. So I'm going to draw a big square, or as close to a square as possible. So here we have a square. I'm going to draw some random lines. Like this. No, in fact, let me draw one more. Um, let me see if I did that. Right, let me, yeah, this here. Okay, so how many times have we been in a position where the diagram, the step in the diagram tells us to take this corner? and fold it to this corner and go straight down through this intersection and meet at the bottom. In fact, let me draw another line, should I? Yeah. Oh, that wouldn't work. But yeah, basically that. Take this edge, fold it to this edge, going straight down. So let me just draw a wee dash. So in essence, that dashed line is where the correct crease should be. It should pass this intersection right here. But when we make that crease, I'm going to draw a black line to show basically where it, the crease actually is. Oh, it's a bad line. So when we actually take this edge and fold it to this edge, guess what? It doesn't go through this intersection. It goes either over to the right, over to the left, or it, but the main thing is it doesn't go through it. It has to go through that intersection, but it doesn't. And you are wondering why. Why does that not go through that intersection? Probably because either, there's a few things, your square isn't perfect, so you've then used the wrong diagonals, which gave you this result, or your square is perfect. Now, you, uh, having a perfect square doesn't really affect it. The more, the more skill you have with working with unperfect squares, you shouldn't really encounter this because there's way that there. 
there is ways to fix this. But your square could be perfect, but your references could be wrong. So you may have made your reference slightly wrong. So let me just give another example. This is your diagonals. And then you take this point, fold it to this point. But just say this crease is slightly to the left. So let me draw another one. So where the crease should be is that dash line. But if we zoom in real close to this corner, here is the dash line right here. Yeah, I'm already zoomed in fully. Our crease ends up being like this. So we have this point I'm going to call 1 and this point I'm going to call 2. So if you can make that out, that dashed line is where the crease should be, but where the black line is, which is that, uh, which is number one, it is at a slightly different angle. So when you mm -hmm. then make, basically just say a crease from there to there, from here to here, using the wrong reference, this line is automatically wrong. And then if you need to take this crease and fold it to this crease. Let me just give another example. And we have point three. So we have line three, which again is now wrong. It is off because we have the wrong reference right here. So the way you can see, <clears throat> your creases are going to be slightly off over and over and over. Simply because we made the wrong reference right here. We made line one, which is supposed to be line two. So that may be that may be because we didn't keep this point along the diagonal when we made it. We may have made it at a slight angle, which can give us this result being number one. And look at his meown. I'll let him in in one second. So that's why it's very important to get your references as correct as possible because the moment you make one wrong crease it will have a knock-on effect to every other crease you make and then you might get to step 65 in pre-creasing and realise why is this not working? Why I have done everything correct this edge goes over to this edge just as the diagram says but it does not meet this part, you're, you're off by quite a big bit right here. So what do you do? Do you use this actual crease? Or you, do you actually bring this edge over further to make it go behind? What crease is wrong? Is this crease at the wrong angle? Or this one? Or this one? It's all because of the wrong reference. So that's basically what it is. The more precise you get, the more patience you take to get the right reference or the right angles or the right amount of first creases then you are good to go so it's very important you do not rush pre-creasing and most importantly your references okay so I hope I covered everything in this video and um, if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and that is it thanks for watching oh tomorrow is the last day of 2020 and 2020, we're already in the future, the last day of 2019, so thank you so much, obviously this will be uploaded next year at some point, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next part, also if you want me to cover anything and how, how to get better at origami then let me know your subjects below and I will do what I can, see you next year in 2020.